Alright, in this session we're going to talk about contour milling and for our example we're going to again create a rectangle and we're just going to select a rectangle, let it snap to the intersection, drag it away and then manually enter the length and width or also called width and height minus three inches so there's our rectangle and then we click OK alright so now we just have a 2D representation so let's translate this so we go to transform translate and we're gonna hold your shift button down select one of the legs it changed the whole rectangle and then we click end selection then we're not going to copy, we're not going to move, but we're going to join in a Z minus direction by a distance of minus 1 inch 250. So that's the thickness of our part. Now join, notice, adds these legs at the corners, at the intersections. Okay, so basically creating a box for us. So we click OK. Then we're going to add some stock. So we already have our machine group. We're going to click on the plus sign and we're going to select stock setup. Now notice there's zeros in the X, Y and Z fields. So what we do is we're going to select the corners. We're going to let it snap to the upper left hand corner and let it snap to the lower right hand corner. Then we know our part is 1 inch 250. But we're going to start out with a little bit bigger stock so we're going to make that inch and a half okay then we're going to put a check mark in display and i want to show you what happens when we've done this much so now you can see the outline of the stock that we created but it is exactly the size of the part and normally you're going to start out with a piece of stock that is larger obviously then your finished dimension so all we do is right next to the three put your cursor then enter plus point 250 enter and we do the same thing in X plus point 250 enter and we click OK there so notice if I click top you can see that's the outline of our stock so that's the amount of material we're going to remove to machine our part now if I select front you can see that the top of the stock is dead even with the finished part so we need to shift that up by about 15,000 so we'll go back to top we go back into our stock setup and right here in the lower left hand corner we're going to shift the Z 15 thousands up okay so click OK now let's go again to front and now if you zoom in you can see there's a little bit of stock above our part and that is usually what you do when you set up your part on the CNC machine you teach your zero below the top of the raw material at least 15 thousands if it's nice and flat you may have to sometimes teach it down more but in this case we'll just shift it 15,000 so go back to the top and we have our raw material outline so now that we have created our stock we are ready to create the contour mill operation so we already have our machine group ready right next to the red arrow we're gonna right click hover over mill toolpaths and select contour that opens up this menu it wants us to select the chain now it's important the way you select the chain we want to make sure that we climb mill and we're going to start at the top left so that's where you basically want to select the first entity is the top left now the way this window opens up is with chaining highlighted but what we're going to do is select partial and wait and I'll I'm gonna show you why because when we select the entities I'm gonna select this first one notice you have a, a green arrow now the next entity is this leg right here then here 
and here. Now notice there's a green arrow and a red arrow. If I don't have weight, this green arrow tends to follow that red arrow around. You don't want to do that. So by selecting weight, that green arrow stays put on our first entity start point and waits until we come all the way around. Then we click OK and that opens this menu again. We are set to toolpath contour. Notice that that is active. We need to select tool. So we don't have a tool in our library currently. We have our face mill from our previous operation. So we're going to select a tool. It just so happens that the end mills are visible. If they were not, click on filter and make sure that end mill is highlighted and deselect anything else that might be active. Okay. Then you click OK and then only the end mill show up. So for this operation, we're going to select a half inch end mill. We click OK. Now, again, it is randomly giving a tool number. So we're going to double click on it. We'll go to the next page and we'll make that tool number one. And that's a half inch flat end mill. And what I'd like to do is usually my tool number one is a rough end mill. So I put RGH in front of it and click finish. So when I post it out, it will show that tool number one is a rough end mill. Okay. So while we're in this menu, we're going to enter the spindle speed that we're going to run this tool at. And that's 2500 RPM. We're going to rough it 25 inches a minute and the plunge feed is 50 inches a minute. Now we want to make sure to always put a check mark in the rapid retract box. Otherwise it's going to retract at a feed rate. And the retract happens at the end of the toolpath where the retracts goes back to the start of a toolpath and goes down for a second, third pass or back home. We want to make sure that that is done in rapid to save time. So we'll get a bit comment, rough, contour. And we'll go to cut parameters and notice how it has a compensation type and there are several different selections and we have computer control where reverse where and off computer will offset the tool by half the distance around the contour and will not post out cutter compensation or the G41 or G42. Where will do that for us? Where will actually post out a G41 or a G42 cutter compensation and off is line center. Those are the only three that we're going to cover. Okay, so for a roughing operation where we don't need cutter compensation, we're going to select computer. We're going to leave 10 thousandths on the walls. And since we don't have pockets, we're just going to full depth around the part. We're not going to leave any stock on the floors. Then the next thing we're going to do is go to lead in, lead out. And I'm going to let this default out. And we're going to discuss this in detail to show you how you manage the entry and exit of your toolpath. Okay. Then the only other parameter we're going to worry about right now is the linking parameter. Always turn these to absolute. The retract I recommend putting at one inch, feed plane, point one, top of stock. We shifted our stock 15,000. So we'll go ahead and let that ride. The depth is minus one inch 250. And we're going to add an additional 30,000. So we're just going to tell it minus 0.03 enter. Now you could have manually entered that, but if you can just let the software do the math, it makes it easier sometimes. Then the only other thing I'm going to do is turn the coolant on and click the OK button. Now zoom out just a little bit. You can see a preview of our tool path around our part. It comes in the, almost in the center, comes in in the straight line, arcs in, goes all the way around the part, and then arcs back out. Now, if we click on back plot, there's our tool. Now, 
Those lines that you see represents the center line of the tool. That's the tool path, okay? So let's hit play and let's watch this tool path as it goes around our parts. So you notice it arced in in the center, kind of rounds the corners off with that radius move. It kind of deburs that corner as it goes around that sharp point. Comes all the way around and in the center of the part arcs back out and exits the part. Now this is the next thing I want to talk about and that is the lead in lead out move and let's go back into the parameters when I came to lead in lead out I told you that I was going to leave these numbers alone because there's quite a bit of adjusting that you can do to manipulate the lead in and the lead out or the entry and the exit of that tool as it enters the part. Now when I let it default out like that it entered at the center because this is a closed contour it's kind of like makes a loop okay so therefore the software is going to start in the center of that contour and exits. So the first thing we want to do is move that entry and exit off the part and the reason why is because when you enter and exit it's going to leave, usually leave a mark on your part okay so we want to get that off the part. So the first thing we're going to do and we're going to make one change at a time to see how it affects our toolpath is this second box right here where it says enter and exit at midpoint in closed contours. So let's uncheck that, click OK and regenerate. Now notice it moved that entry and exit to the end of the part. Alright so now that's still quite a bit of distance away you know that's a lot of air time so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to get rid of the arc move okay then we hit the double arrow and it copies that to the other side okay now let's see what that does so we regen that again now notice the start point of my tool is in line with my first piece of geometry and it is at a safe distance away from that excess material okay so notice how it goes around the part right now and exits now notice it's exiting almost up against the part so what we want to do is we want to make a move away from that part okay so the next thing we're going to do is put a 20 thousandths overlap and we're going to make a perpendicular exit a hundred thousandths away so let's see how that affects the toolpath click regenerate so it starts in a safe place you can see the distance away from the stock outline in line tangent with the first piece of geometry goes all the way around and then we slow it down I'm going to zoom in goes around the corner that's that 20 thousandths overlap and then a hundred thousandths away from the part before it retracts so that move away from the part is a perpendicular move so after it made a 20 thousandths overlap move right here it did a perpendicular move away from that part so what I'd like to do is also put a perpendicular move on the entry of a part so let's go back into the parameters and notice how this is set to tangent and so in essence we have extended the start of the contour about a half an inch okay now I'm gonna instead of doing a tangent move of a half inch I'm going to extend so I'm gonna make this active adjust the start of the contour I'm gonna extend it by 0.5 yeah and then I'm gonna change that tangent move to a perpendicular move to 0.1 now let's see what that does I'm going to regen. Now notice we have a perpendicular move here. It's still extended, so it's 
away from the part in a safe distance so it doesn't come down on the raw material then the overlap goes around the corner and makes a perpendicular move now the reason why you want to do a perpendicular move because when you do a finish pass and we have wear active and let me show you what I mean by wear I told you that at cut parameters we have several options we have computer we have wear and we have off that we're going to be covering in this course computer does not post out a G41 or a cut comp but wear does now on the finish pass we're going to be selecting wear and then what you would like to happen is the G41 will be activated on this little move this little perpendicular move at the start of the contour and then at the end when it makes the perpendicular move away from the part it actually posts out a G40 so that is why you want to get in the habit of making that perpendicular move extending the entry and doing the overlap so that it finishes that corner now, this just happens to be a sharp corner but it could also be a radius corner so you always want to overlap so that it does that radius and goes just a little bit beyond before it makes that perpendicular move away from the part as it cancels the cut -a comp now there will not be cut -a comp on our roughing passes but if you adjust your lead in lead out moves on your rough pass then you can duplicate that tool path and those lead in lead out moves and then just change your compensation type to wear and you won't have to make any other changes to make the G41 and the G40 in the correct place in your program I hope that makes sense